And speaking of voting Labour, don't do it. Don't vote Labour. They've been saying oh. lots of things recently that has been throwing out the red meat to right-wingers, disaffected Tory voters, people who look at the country and go, well, this is all going to hell. Yeah. Let's not vote for the people that have been doing this for the past 13 years. And then they look over at Labour and see that Keir Starmer has been making some claims that he is now a conservative, fat chance, <sighs> unless he means conserving Blairism and the same paradigm we've been living in for the past 25 yeah, years. Blairism is dying. I have to say that, says Keir Starmer. Yes, I, that's right. I'm a conservative. So I mean, one, one, one thing is just to bear in mind, when your politicians start throwing out red meat, ask yourself why, you, why they force you onto a vegan diet every other day of the week. Why, they would do this. Why isn't the red meat your main party policy? If you throw that out when you know you want people to like you, why don't you do that every single day of the week? And then people will just have every reason to like you Every, every all the time until it gets to the elections. I, well, because it's sheer electioneering. That's, big, exactly, because they, they know what they're doing. They know what. And doing. something important that has been co that has come out recently is an article from the Daily Skeptic. We're not going to go to it straight away, but an article from the Daily Skeptic examining a proposal by Labour called the New Britain document, which lays I out their new plans. <laughs> I, I I know, I know, but it lays out their plans. <laughs> for the future of yeah. the country if they are to get in power. And I tell you what, it's not looking good. It's really not looking good. I must say as well that this document's been out for about six months. Some people already knew what I'm was sure on it. I'm sure we covered it previously. We, because... we might have. I know that yeah. Scrump did a stream on it, but, yeah, 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 uh, but nobody was really paying attention to it before yeah. this Daily Skeptic article came out. I think AA spoke about it last night as well. But, yeah, yeah, but we the... need to spread the word that That's Labour nice. are evil, uh, Blairism is evil, and just because they're saying the right rhetoric doesn't mean they actually are going to do anything with it. Well, they're just going to ruin us. Like it's it's all a front to just ruin us. Yes, and I think it's rather appropriate to direct people to the website where they can find your book club on John Jacques Rousseau's social contracts. Because essentially, yeah. as you pointed out while we were discussing this beforehand, what this is going to be is initiating the social contract society to an even greater degree than we all already experience. Yeah, the the the, the Labour Party, Keir Starmer in particular. I've come to the conclusion they're just not very bright people and they don't understand what it is they're doing. And so they've got this pre -pro this NPC political programming that is just taken from the French Revolution where they're like, yeah, we need to do all of those things. And so they're enacting a slow scale French Revolution in Britain at the moment. Perhaps. I don't know necessarily if I would say that they're unintelligent people. Oh, I would definitely say the Labour Party are unintelligent. I, I would say elements of them are. Keir Starmer seems to be trying to reorient them in a more intelligent direction, purely off the back of the rhetoric for electioneering. I, I, I don't but think at it's the same time, I think it's just pragmatism. Well, he, I, don't, I don't think he understands he, what it well, is he he's asking. He has Blair to. guiding him behind the scenes, and Blair, sure. I do think, is intelligent, just evil. L let's be fair. He got what he wanted done, but what he wanted yeah. was evil. Yeah, but the, the reason he wants these things is because he's not very smart, I think. I don't think any of these people are very smart. Blair is definitely the best of them, but that's not <laughs> saying a lot. Uh, but anyway, I'll let you carry yeah, on. Yeah, yes. And uh, we also have another article, uh, a deep think that you did on this yeah. as well, where you were talking about Rousseau Savage, well, which the, is also the, available on the website. The reason that these are important is because I'm explaining the assumptions that go into all of these things why they matter because essentially what Keir Starmer is trying to do is arrive at the year zero position that the French revolutionaries took up and is trying to create like the self-made man who is not a product of a time and a place whereas we are all products of times and places we all come from somewhere in a certain place in a certain time from a certain people with certain habits and customs and language and there's the accumulated um detritus of tradition that weighs on us whether we like it or not and Keir Starmer's like yeah but we need to get rid of that so you can't get rid of that the French have been trying for 200 years and they're still the French you know it's just for now <laughs> for now it, it is just the way that our civilizations are and the, the the very notion of a social contract is kind of evil really when you think about it. I won't go on about it now yeah That's so if you want for. to learn more about it then you can watch the book club and you can read Carl's article both of which are available for people who get a premium subscription to the website which starts out at five pounds per month in fact is the, is the deep think free is it just the silver members um, uh, get the audio track or is it I can't remember offhand we can't remember offhand but either way you should get a subscription to the website because yeah. we have so much excellent work on their videos, articles that you can get access to for five pounds a month. So very good investment, if you ask me. So moving on with this then. So I did cover in recent weeks the um, conservative turn that a lot of Labour's rhetoric has been taking. I've been mm. sure to, cons uh, to um, 
to asterisk all of this by saying, you know, they, they will say the right things, but they will do everything that you expect Labour to do because they are still Labour. When, when they That's say Conservative, from them. they mean David Cameron Conservative. Yes, they mean modern 21st century yeah. Conservative, which isn't fitting of the title. But still, if we carry on, we can see what they're doing now. And there was an uh, announcement earlier today where they were talking about what they would do. Keir Starmer went up and gave a speech in front of people. And this speech, was he was talking about the class ceiling. I was talking about this because, of course, being Labour, you can talk all you want about conservatism, but all of it is constantly about class divides, how we need to allow the working class to be able to get a leg up through the systems of education. We need to use education to mean that people, and he used this very phrase in the speech, can break the links from where they started to where they end up, which seems to me to just be, I, I want to break people's family yeah. relationships, break the relationship to the land yeah. that they're tied to. Joe Biden actually said something similar recently, but at least he uh, actually said it in the traditional conservative way. He said, I, I want people to um, be able to achieve what they want, something along, achieve what they want in the place that they come from, right? And that's actually quite a conservative message. Well, well that was at the heart of what Starmer was saying from an economic sense. But when you, start to idiot, use, yeah. when you start to use phrases like break the links yeah, yeah. of et cetera, et cetera, you can be sure that it's not just going to stay in the economic world. I don't want them to end up where they started. It's like, but that's where my family is. <laughs> that's where I want to yeah, be. That's where I grew up. That's, that's, where, I lo that's where I feel most at home. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, mean, what's, what's I, want you to I want to break the links with he, your home. He did say that's that he wanted people to not have to move from where they started. But at the same time, I don't think that any of this is going to end up that way. But that's my point. That Keir Starmer is just not bright. He's just not very bright. Like All of this, all of the implication of what you've just said is obviously packaged in there. That any normal person would be like, okay, so you don't want me to leave where I come from, but you don't want me to end up where I came from. So what am I doing? Idiots. Yes, there are some many contradictions in this, which does come from yeah. a lot of the issues that you're discussing there. So he unveiled a new goal of half a million more children <laughs> reaching their learning targets by 2030 because constantly just going education, education, education yeah. works so well under Blair. Part of the plans include removing tax breaks for private schools, which he said would raise one billion pounds, funds that he would use to employ 6,500 more teachers in areas with shortages. So what's going to happen is that the price of private schooling will go up, which means fewer children will go to private schools, which means he won't generate the revenue that he's trying to get because the private schools will shrink and they will give them less money. And also it'll increase the burden on public schools because more children will be taken from public schools to uh, so private schools. So what, what you're schools. suggesting is that private schools might become even more exclusive, probably yes. for the children of those like Keir Starmer, increasing yes. class divides. And he will have reduced the overall quality of the education of children in this country. He will not have attain, obtained the money he expected, and he will have just increased the tax burden on the taxpayer because he is an effing moron. And this is just basic um, logic, basic logic as well, which is that just throwing more money at any situation and throwing more teachers into the school situation does not solve the problem. What solves the problem is the quality of education that you are getting, which does not just come from having multiple teachers standing around at any one time, possibly doing things, maybe. Yeah. And also when you're overloading the schools with immigrants and the children of immigrants, that might also have something to do with the shortages that some are experiencing. Oh, it absolutely does, man. Yes. He, he also committed to ensuring that every child has a specialist teacher in his classroom and promised to modernize the national curriculum. That's, that's uh, dangerous. You can, you can say whatever you that's want. That's dangerous. Well, I think modernize, I would not well, want yeah. the leftists in Labour to be modernizing the national curriculum no, any I mean, more they did than it under, already is. They did that under Blair and it, it, the decline is just so palpable yes. at this point. He, he also wants to end the academic and vocational divide. And there was Listening to it, there was a commitment to trying to get people into areas where they can actually have jobs, which, I mean, fair, but why are Who we in this situation in the first place? Yeah. Why yeah. are we in this situation yeah, 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 in the first place? There was also this, which I saw you retweet and speak about, yeah. where he's going to set out plans in a major education to uh, put speaking lessons at the heart <laughs> of the national curriculum. Now, Schools I do think. will teach children to speak. Well, there is precedent for this. You used to be able to get elocution lessons. Yep. In that, schools, that and was I, to help you lose your accent. That was, but it does also help you to formulate your it speech does? and be able to communicate effectively. So I think there is some pragmatism to this and some value to it. Problem is, I imagine it's once again probably motivated more by the fact of we've got lots of foreigners who can barely speak English well, in the classroom. I, I read, I read this uh, clip of the article. And yes. it doesn't say that in there. It, uh, Keir's arguing 
that actually uh, children are just dumb these days and can't properly articulate what it is they're trying to say. And this is true. All That's you need totally to do true. is look at any clip of Gen Z. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally true. I mean, it's Zed, American. Zed. Um, uh, but the thing is, if you go back and watch like a clip of like, you can find video clips of um, you know, journalists interviewing children from like the 1960s, and the children form fully... This is quite remarkable looking back at those. They, they, they are as eloquent as Douglas Murray, and it's just like, okay, what happened? You know, why did this change? Why are we constantly on the decline? There was educational decline, mm. and uh, it doesn't seem that any of these solutions that are being put forward have fixed them because there have been variations of yeah. all of these solutions done in the time between now and then, they and things just Latin. keep getting worse. Sorry. Yes, well, they need, what, into it. Well, they, what they need is some kind of trivium yeah. where you get yeah, taught yeah, yeah, logic, yeah. you get taught proper maths, and then you get taught uh, rhetoric. Absolutely. True. That's what they need, the yeah. classical education, and that mm. helps to, people to be able to form their own minds, understand the world around them, and then communicate it better to yeah. one another. That's clearly what needs to be done. I don't see any. I don't see Keir Starmer going out and say, what we need is a re, uh, revitalization of the trivium, though. I don't see him saying that. No. no. I see him saying, let's just keep throwing money at this brick wall. Well, his solution is the managerial solution, right? It's, he, he can't speak to the quality and character of the children themselves. He can only speak to the results. And so he's like, well, we just need line to go up. And there are other problems in the Labour Party as well. I mean, there's constant problems in the Labour Party, but there are other ones going on right now, including the ULES uh, pr priorities that, that are being put forward, the ULES plans, especially around London, Sadiq Khan. For those unaware, ULES is ultra low emission zone, which if you drive into particular parts of London, you just have to pay a charge. Or like me, you find out that you get a £60 fine overnight because... I'm, right, I, I just want to yeah. harp on this for go a on, quick moment on. because it yeah. really, really annoyed me. <laughs> Last year, around a, a little over a year ago, I went into Brixton. For, it was for a gig. I didn't want to go into Brixton. I was wearing a stab-proof vest. I was safe. Only a few people died. Right. It, it's, it's fine. Um, and I paid the charges and all of the charges. I, I got into Brixton at what, like five o'clock. I'd paid all of the charges, managed to park up, go to the gig. Uh, gig finishes at half 10, get back to the car at 11, start driving out of London not able to get out of London or the ultra low emission zone before midnight, I thought that it would just pay for 24 hours. No, it's, it resets at midnight. So even though I'd already paid the charges, I still got fined, despite the fact that I thought I was following the rules. I hate London. It's a hellhole. It's an awful city. Yes, and they are planning to expand that because at the moment it's mainly parts within the centre of London. Now they're trying to expand it to the M25. And in this article, some of the Labour MPs are rebelling against this because it's obviously a terrible idea. It's obviously going to cause them more trouble than it's worth because people will start complaining to them mm. and filling up their offices with complaints. And then people will just not vote for them if, if this were, goes ahead. If I were left wing, I'd point out that this is just a tax on poor people. Uh, that is actually the trick that they're going for here. They're saying this will affect poor people the most, which Obviously. it absolutely does, because these constituencies that it's going to affect aren't just going to be Westminster. No, It's going to be people of varying backgrounds and varying wealth. But that's some of the stuff that's going on with Labour today. There was also another thing that I put in here. John, if you could just open the link that I had uh, to... No, no, not this one. It's in the document here. Uh, yeah, about the uh, activists. Thank you very much. So at the speech as well that he was giving out, some activists who were already on stage with him, who presumably had been vetted by Labour, because why else would you have them next to their future prime minister, are standing on stage and then decide that what they're going to do is say, oh, you need to, you've done a U-turn on the green commitments. We need you to go back. No more U-turns, Keir. And it's all very manufactured. Yeah. It's all clearly staged because yeah. the whole world is a stage we already looked into a few weeks ago how a lot of the UK government has specific channels set up to be able to manufacture consent and have all of these things done but, but at the click this, of a finger. Notice this. Uh, Green New Deal. What? So the American ideal yes. of a Green New Deal. Right, brilliant. Yes. You can't the, even use Jeremy Corbyn's the Green AOC. Industrial Revolution. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. And you just had the two most diverse members of the stage yeah. just happened to be the ones to do this. And Keir gets an opportunity to look as though he's standing strong, standing firm, waving the crazies off the stage like he will the rest of the country. I'm going to take firm control of it. Obviously staged, as far as I'm concerned. A yeah. clear opportunity, as far as he's concerned, to say, I'm strong, I'm stable, I'm not crazy, but I also still care about the environment. Absolute rubbish. But then yeah. let's get on to the 
the Daily Skeptic article. So this is what people are talking about now, which is the new Britain constitution ending parliamentary democracy. And uh, <laughs> what they say in here is that the proposals of Keir Starmer's A New Britain Constitution, written up by Gordon Brown, who I'm honestly surprised is still alive, let alone involved in UK politics, but he is, yep. are designed to destroy Parliament forever. Don't say base. Don't say base. Of course... The parliament is a historic institution. Yes. I want to continue. And by extension, anything approaching popular, popular sovereignty in Britain. Those, these are the subordination of Parliament to the judiciary, universal English devolution and reorganization of Britain as a multinational state and the enshrining of the current social order as a constitution. Now, So he wants to turn us into a social contract society. He wants to turn us into the USA. Yeah. In miniature. Which is a social contract society. I mean, that's literally what it is. Yes. And devolution, for those who aren't aware, UK politics operates primarily from Westminster and the Houses of Parliament and uh, Parliament itself and then the House of Lords. There's the House of Commons where all the uh, MPs are, and then the House of Lords. And uh, what this would do is separate all of this so that they don't have power over the local constituencies. Now, in a different circumstance, I might say, great, more power to these local constituencies. But there are there is a lot wrapped up in all of this, and also it's being headed by Labour. No, oh, no, I'm, I'm actually kind of in favour of this. I'm in favour. This is a threat. If you devolve England, I'm going to find the furthest right area of England and get elected to whatever you get. <laughs> I'm going to do this. This is a threat, Keir Starmer. This is a campaign promise yeah, yeah. From, yeah, your sorry, future, yeah. promise, yeah. from your future yeah. king, Carl Benjamin. I'm not going to be king. I'm just going to be... Maybe uh, of that particular area. An elected politician they won't be able to get rid of. Because I'm just going to get to the farthest right place and I'm just going to get elected. Well, I mean, what, what a lot of people are concerned about. Care. And what we'll get into in this uh, later on in this article is that a lot of what will happen is essentially it will be devolved as yeah. happened with Wales and Scotland. And as happened with Wales and Scotland, the opportunity will be given for far left lunatics to occupy every new position of bureaucracy that exists because we already hang have. On, hang on, no, 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 no. let's be more optimistic about this i will why, not i why refuse can't, why can't they be far right lunatics occupying every why can't we why can't because we because if it's done by labor they will turn around and arrest those far right lunatics why can't we just galvanize the brexiteers and say hey guys we could take over england this way uh, if, suddenly it's not sounding so bad is it no no hang no, no. see that sounds that sounds good but it won't happen I don't know. I, 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 I think we very, can make it happen if we want to. Maybe, maybe. I'm joking, I'm joking. Yes, I, I, I know. It's, it's going to turn into the Welsh Parliament. And yes, the it, Scottish it, it, Senate that, that's what happens you. with these things. From experience, uh, right-wingers just don't get to have much of a say in these I, I do think a lot events. of that is down to right-wingers not organising enough. Oh, yeah. You know, the right-wing has sadly been quite complacent for a long time. The thing is, if each area of England has its own devolved parliament, well, that's money. Because one of the problems that right-wingers have is financing. You know, they can't get their organizations and uh, finance but of course if it's elected to a, 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 a parliamentary body well those people do get paid and they get staffers and assistants and whatnot well, once again there's a lot more wrapped into all of this which mm, we'll cover I in just a is. moment that seems to be explicitly designed to prevent people with different opinions from the entrenched bureaucracy yeah. from getting into any positions of power for instance that on this yeah. Labour's very nice and slick, renewing our democracy and rebuilding our but economy. Look, look at the picture. Look at the picture. It is literally a vertex diagram of Britain. It's not a photo. It's not an artistic representation. It's stripped away Britain to merely a series of lines in the rough shape of Britain. This is how their minds operate. They could have had a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing picture of Britain that was really nice to look at. <clears throat> no, they've stripped away everything that makes Britain what it is like the greenery, the, the the countryside, and they've reduced it to merely lines and blot and heat blobs. Yes, a tech right. intern drafted this up for oh, this, them, but and that is, is the mindset think. that uh, that uh, inspires. This is what the manager sees when he thinks of Britain. Yes, he doesn't see a real place. No, he sees a series of plotted graphs through which he can yeah. manipulate to get desired results. That's exactly. Doesn't it. see people, uh, but this, as you would imagine includes the same sorts of headlines that you would expect. A country of potential. Sorry, we were already a great country. Yeah. And we have the potential to be oh. a great country again, but not with Labour. Not with Tories either, to be honest. But either way, yeah. uh, the scourge, the scourge of inequality. Everybody's favourite talking point that they love to harp on constantly. And there's more in here. I'm so literally going to run on a platform that's the opposite of this. I'm pro-inequality. <laughs> <laughs> I can the, make an argument for inequality. The glory now. of inequality. Yeah. Well, no, because, yes. no, no, that's exactly what it is. 
The glory of having passed on an inheritance to your children. That's how I'll frame it. The glory of <clears> living <throat> in a place where not everybody is some amorphous blob expected to be the exact same as one another. Imagine that your children get to inherit the good things that you built up during your lifetime. Vote for me if you want that to continue. There Sorry. you go. There's another campaign promise. Yeah. So uh, in this docu- in this page, they say, firstly, we propose a new Britain of shared purpose. The purpose of a... a new... Sorry, I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> I just... It's just so alien and so French, frankly, this. It's just like, oh, why don't we have a new France? A new Britain? No, uh, we, we, we live in England. We live in Britain. We, this is a very old country and we like it being an old country. I don't want to just get rid of it. I don't want to scrap it all. I like living in my old, comfortable shoes, you know? Like, I don't yeah, want but they're a bit crusty one. around the edge, aren't they? Don't you want some sketches instead? No, I was very happy with the old country. Wouldn't that you we prefer had. some Nikes? They're smart. That I've got a graph here that says they're very efficient. Are they easies? <laughs> <laughs> no. We won't get into that now, will we? I, I was very happy with what I had. Thank you very much. And I don't. I just don't think that Keir Starmer is the man to create a brilliant new Britain. No. God. No, he certainly is not. Nor is Tony Blair for any Iranian rug merchants who might be watching this right now. The purpose of the New Britain should be grounded in the shared values and aspirations that unite people across our country. And to make that possible, we need to build new constitutional foundations. We don't have a constitution. We have an unwritten constitution. They're going to try and formalize something. The the constitutional foundations of Britain are uh, over a thousand years old and are inherited. They are traditional. They are literally inscribed on the hearts of the people. Keir Starmer wants to turn us into a piece of paper. Just literally, here's the social contract, sign here. Now it's about our values. Well, we don't share values here. We well, don't share values here. I mean, in, as the French Revolution was still going on, De Maistre was writing about how if you actually, if you can't come up with a constitution a priori, it has yeah. to be based on the experience of the people yes. within a particular nation who've been there for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And if you write it down, that automatically destroys any legitimacy that the constitution may have had. Because, and he was a lawyer, so he was thinking it in legalistic terms as well as religious terms. But it was essentially, well, once you've got a rule written down on a piece of paper, you will get all manner of technicians and managers looking mm. for ways in which they can legitimately break that rule. That's a fair point. And he, even, I mean, and that's, that's probably what's going to happen. But a, a best case scenario, the best you can really do in that situation is just explain to people what they already think. You know, it's like, oh, you do all these things. Well, I'll write it down. It's like, okay, great. We don't need it written down. You know? Well, this isn't going to be what people already think. This is going no, to be what Labour dictates from on high. It's, it's just going to be, again, it's just going to be French Revolution 2.0. Yeah, so they also say they're going to propose a root and branch reform of our centre of government. Uh, they're going to put forward detail, detailed proposals for abolishing the current undemocratic House of Lords. Not the undemocratic Supreme Court. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, because that was the, done by Blair. Yeah, the American import that is the Supreme Court. And Keir's like, yeah, we don't have enough Americanism in this Yeah, I, I suppose as far as I'm aware as well, the Supreme Court don't do anything to block legislation every so often like the House of Lords occasionally do. Yeah, I mean, the House of Lords are meant to be a check through the wise men of the and women of the country who don't have to have the, the democratic pressure of getting elected every five years. But, I mean, but this thing, isn't it? He's like, I'm going to re- restructure all of this because the thousand years of history just didn't produce the communist revolution I was expecting. It's like, good. And uh, they want to make sure as well that there's no going back. Because they they say here, we also believe that as part of our new constitutional settlement, there must be a safeguard to ensure that change is permanent as well as profound. We are going to tear apart your country, reform it in the way that we want, and then we're going to staple it together with superglue to make sure, and we're going to concrete it together to make sure that you can't do anything about it in the future. We're going to have a thousand year Starmer Reich Yes, that's, that's what, literally what he's what asking we are for, suggesting yeah. here. But I, I love it as if as if future generations are now going to be bound by the social contract that Keir Starmer writes. It's totally immoral. That's, it's very arrogant. Scruton, Scruton points out this is essentially like treaty making, where it's going to be a dead hand on future generations. Like, no, you have been bounded. You've been binded by Keir Starmer's midwit interpretation of French Republican politics. It's like, why? We ha- like the, the, one of the great things about traditions is that they change, like they're flexible. You do what seems to be in line with what came previously, but is also fit within the current environment which you are in. So traditions, it's organic, exactly, they're organic. They change, they grow, they mold. Things that aren't useful get forgotten, and things that are useful get remembered. And this makes them holistic, wholesome, decent, organic, as you said. This is literally, as Scruton says, the dead hand of a treaty. It's like no. 
500 years ago. Keir Starmer wrote this down and you have to live by it now forever. I well, hate it. In, in fact, I've, I've forgotten his name, but there was an American anarchist in the 1800s who was making the argument like that against the Constitution of the mm. United States, saying, well, I didn't sign it. And well, nobody alive signed it, so why am I having to stick to it? Man, uh, like, go, go, and, go and read with So Savage. I am so against the idea of a social contract. And, because the, and people are like, well, what's the alternative? Well, we are a sentimental traditional society. Our, con- our civilization was built up by bonds of sentiment, where we actually liked where we were. We liked the people around us, and we thought well of them, and therefore our interests were theirs, because we were essentially, going back to Aristotle's very original conception of what a civic polity was, is a, 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 a city based on friendship and relationships exactly it was all about relationships it starts from the family and then expands out by their association of families and the head patriarch of those families they all get together and figure out what's going on and it was just i mean you don't have to be quite so strict about like patriarch and glad but like it it the regions are bound together because of a shared love of the place and a shared history together and sharing the same problems because they live in the same country and that's what it was based on. It was all based on bonds of sentiment, relationships, as you say. It wasn't a document that now anyone can say I've signed and lay claim to all of this. You know, this was particular to a time and place. So I'm going to go on. And this no, no, it's really all right. There's a, there's a lot to talk about. I can tell it's incensed you. Oh, I, somewhat. I, I just hate this so much. There is, as you can imagine, with anything like this, with any proposals like this, there is an absurdly long document to go yeah. with all of it, which is 155 yeah. pages long. I will not go through the whole thing. I'll instead just draw your attention to a few diagrams, including this one where they're talking about Britishness and they have happily and very organically quantified people's sense of identity into a handy dandy graph for every one of us. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm going to write down a number. Yes, where it says that uh, we've got yeah. a tridentity, not an identity, not a sense of being British, but a tridentity where Britishness is felt alongside national and local senses of belonging. Okay, this is fair, wh- whatever. Uh, we do have it. So, you know, I'm British, but I'm also English. I'm yeah. also from a particular part of England that are all important to me. But what's this? World citizen. Oh, it's being used out, as the control as well. Turns out that just you know most people have a really strong sense of being a world citizen. Well, they they don't actually, which is why it's even more <laughs> strange that it's going being used as the control. That is weird, isn't very, it? Very very strange. And uh, th- once again, this is just the quantification of people's yeah. feelings. Very silly thing to do. And there was also this one. If you don't mind ju- uh, zooming in a bit on this oh, as well. This is, this is the thing. I this mean. is the one that's been going around social media. Yeah. And, and, but what this is, is the genuine total destruction of the traditional Britain that we lived in prior to New Labour. Like, this, is yes. the, this is the culmination of the destruction of this country under the New Labour. They're project. literally, here's a list of things that are old Britain, which is you All are good. British. It comes from your parents and your birth. Uh, oh, with the centralized state. So they're trying to appeal to all of the libertarian yeah. Labour voters. You don't want a centralized state, do you? Well, actually, I do, because I can see what's happening in the devolved parliaments, and it's a and total waste of money. Agnostic on the role of geography and family wealth in determining life chances. Yeah. New Britain proactively equalizing opportunity. What no, that so means. It's ethical co- state. No, what this means is communism. Yes. That, that's communism. Yes. Power and wealth of the center trickles down to the periphery. Or the wealth of the nation invested to create wealth and every invested by who? So the state proactively equalizes, and then the state proactively invests to create wealth everywhere. This is communism. So I love it. power and wealth trickle down from the center. So if you if I if I start a business and we start doing really well because loads of you chaps subscribe, then the state's gonna be like, well, that's trickle down somehow. <laughs> so we're we're going to have to redistribute this to somewhere in Bradford, where you know, Mr. Mohammed whatever has not done the same i mean why thomas soul constantly points it's... out that trickle down economics is not real and has never actually been the name for any economic theory that anybody has ever put forward yeah. not even reaganomics so trickle down is determined is a bit of rhetoric used entirely yes. by communists yes and yeah. they get to decide what trickle down is and yeah. what it essentially means is not communism but this but this uh, thing where it's like britishness is defined how we born parentage and birth is because that's literally what the old world is we 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 don't have the right of the soil we have the right of the blood uh it's just sully and just something sanguine or something sanguinous something like that uh, well now it's defined by citizenship well, i've got the well, passport that's, no, but that's that's I've the point the... now 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 it's the right of the, the soil rather than the right of the blood and that's new world that's the new world well, what social it, contract view of doing these things what it seems to me because, is well, hang on, because in in the old world in literally all of the old world you're 
identity and ethnicity is inherited by from your parentage. Like that's how it works. That's how heredity works. And what they're doing is saying, no, we're we're breaking that chain, and now it's anyone anywhere at step one all the time. That's certainly a part of it. But what it seems to me to mean is that uh, citizenship. Well, who determines citizenship? The state. The state. So the state decides whether what you have done is worthy of citizenship or not. It, it has nothing connected. Once again, it's breaking that link to your heritage, what you came from before, and only what you have done right now. What have you done for me right now? Mm -hmm. There is also, uh, I won't find the pages, but I've got some quotes here, worrying talk of social rights included in this. Wow, okay. We therefore propose that the rights created and protected should be those that form the foundation of the UK welfare state. Oh, so these are the new rights that are sacred to us, are the rights of the welfare state. Our economic development, Milton Friedman is crying somewhere. I'm right crying. <laughs> Our economic development proposals are intended to address the root of the problem of idleness, and we therefore propose four new social rights relating to health, schooling, poverty, and housing. Housing How's rights. How does this get around idleness? You're I being would imagine. Idle. That... Why don't we give you some free stuff? <laughs> this will help the problem. Yeah, this will make you less idle, won't <laughs> this it? Will make, this will motivate you if we just give you free things. Good arguments can be made for extending social rights further to include, say, rights in relation to health, not simply health care. So not simply health care. We get to determine what the optimum level of health is oh, for you. Oh, right. Okay. So Very this is strange. Fat phobic. Got it. Uh, uh, it's sounding a bit based in that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm being one of Or to post school education or to guarantees about housing provision. There you go again. Yeah. Similarly, rights can be extended into You'll the economic sphere. You'll live in the government sphere. tenement block and you'll like it. Yep, they can be extended into the economic sphere on fair conditions of work or on culture and the environment. Climate lockdown, yeah. climate lockdown. Yeah. The Equality and Human Rights Commission should report at least annually on how effectively key social rights are being delivered across the UK and on the guaranteed levels of social provision across England. So Everything's already, going to be managed. I've already spoken about why the Equality and Human Rights Commission needs to be abolished, along with yeah. the Equalities Acts, Close. both of them, that allow them to exist in the first place. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. That's just a bunch of bureaucrats yeah. infecting every aspect of life, determining whether it's equal enough. This is Sewis Lewis's... Um tyranny of the people who think they're doing the right thing they they persecute you without end because they do so with the permission of their own conscience yes there is more in this particular daily skeptic article but we've been going on for a little while now yeah. about this and you can read the article yourself because i think we've already painted enough of a dystopian picture to be honest maybe we should do a deep dive into this yeah maybe somewhere. maybe we should because there is a lot in here yeah. so uh, possibly keep a lookout for that in the future and until then remember that uh, labor might be saying nice things but they mean bad things. Yes. Don't vote for them. And uh, don't even want to say vote for the Tories because no, I hate the Tories, the Tories as well. Don't vote, vote for either of vote them. Vote for reform or reclaim. There you go. Like people who we know and like, you know? Don't, oh God. We, we, are, we are going into a dark age. Can if you appreciated that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the contemplation series, this episode, and what makes music good. And if you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.